Welcome back to The Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. Time for Off the Press. As usual, we'll take you through the pages of the National Dailies and we'll also have an analyst join the conversation. Chris Kindy Nwandu is on standby. Good morning, Chris. It's good to have you join us. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Good morning, Chris. Okay, so I start off with the um, Daily Trust newspaper this morning. Let's find out what big stories we have on the Daily Trust. And the banner caption reads, Nigerians to pay more taxes. Tariffs, uh, that's what the federal government is quoted to say. Prices of drinks, tobacco, stamp duty to rise. Subsidy removal, additional taxes will aggravate economic woes. That's what experts are quoted to say. Obasan draw to Nigerians, don't expect anything from Buhari, that's the president, former president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, advising Nigerians and saying, uh, don't expect anything from the current president. You also have federal government rakes in 227 billion naira as MTN wins 5G license COVID-19. Unvaccinated core members bad from NYSE camps. That's also another one. Nigeria, UAE lose millions daily as diplomatic war deepens. Uh, more airlines reject Nigerian passengers to Dubai. Countries pushing for self-interest says done. Consultation ongoing. Foreign Affairs Ministry is quoted on that. Declare state of emergency on terrorists. And Claves Tambawal urges uh buhari 20 killed in bauchi auto crash like facebook zoom to start charging 7.5 percent vats from nigerian users uh, so it, it brings us back to the fact that there will be more taxes and tariffs according to the federal government but that's the much we can take this morning on the daily trust newspaper away from the daily trust uh, we'll move on next to uh, the daily times uh, newspaper the uh, banner headline for this morning is omicron uh, we've initiated steps to make uk others reverse ban on nigerian travelers that's according to the federal government once that while countries are free to set out measures to protect their citizens nigeria should not be singled out other stories on the daily times newspaper this morning Finance Minister hints on possible additional taxes in 2022. All right, uh, more stories. A stronger executive legislative partnership will deepen democracy, says Buhari. Uh, those are most of the stories you can find, but then let's see if we have more. $418 million debt court fixes December 21 to hear pending applications in 36 governor's suits. 2023 elections, new electoral law now awaits National Assembly Presidency INEC. MTN, MAFAB win provisional licenses for NCC's 5G spectrum auctioning. Uh, those are all the stories you can find on the front page of the Daily Times newspaper this morning. Away from the Daily Times, let's quickly look at uh, the leadership newspaper this morning. And bold on the headline, you have Controversies Trails, Akonde's account of Osiban Jaw's emergence as vice president. And uh, that's a bold caption on the leadership. Tunubu Aregbeshola Amosu comes decline comments on power play and intrigues. It's also writing you find underneath the board caption. Federal government rallies global consensus on asset recovery. Afeni Ferris six fresh probe of Bolaige's mother. Omicron, United Kingdom to leave travel ban on Nigeria orders. Nigerian passengers, I Lome Ghana's escape routes. Our concern is how to make Nigeria better in post Buhari era. That's what the former president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Lushegono Basanjo, was quoted to say. That's the watch we can take on the leadership this morning. Away from the leadership, uh, the next paper we are reviewing is the Daily Independent. The banner headline for this morning, UAE rescinds decision against Nigerian travelers to Dubai. 
or two riders there. Ethiopian Airlines to resume boarding of Nigerians today. Restrictions are due to rising COVID-19 cases in Nigeria, according to the UAE. Insurance boards may be liable for unpaid claims by firms. A number of governments uh, confiscate petrol stations gutted by fires in Onicha. $418 million deduction court declined granting injunctive order against federal government. Modu Sharif may emerge consensus candidate for APC national chairmanship. Finance Minister hints on possible additional taxes in 2022. Most the reason the Daily Independent, NYSC makes COVID-19 vaccination condition for camp registration. Inspector killed as gunmen attack Abia police headquarters. Namdi Kano sues DSS AGF over poor medical attention. Ninth Assembly most successful since 1999, Lawan boasts. Those are the stories on the front page of the Daily Independent newspaper this morning. All right, let's have uh, Chris Mwandu join the conversation this morning. Good morning, Chris. Good morning. Thanks once again for having me. All right, thank you for joining us. So we start off with the Daily Trust newspaper this morning and on the bold caption, dominating all of the papers is the fact that Nigerians to pay more taxes and tariff according to the federal government. And that's uh, come 2022. More like a New Year package. Yes, more like a New Year package. And um, let me say it here yeah, that uh, there's nothing wrong in Nigeria's paying tax. It is a global uh, way of raising the funds for the government. And um, in most countries of the world, people pay taxes compared to what we are uh, having here. There are so many Nigerians that don't pay taxes for obvious reasons. Um, that is where that stands. But the flip side we reach is also that those countries where the taxes are paid, especially the advanced countries, you will see what the taxes, taxes are used for good roads, provision of good road, water, uh, hospital, education, and all <laughs> every other thing that concerns human endeavor. That's what they use their own for. But I was there, what do we use that for? Our roads are bad, we cannot provide electricity for ourselves. Uh, we cannot, uh, people cannot get to the hospitals that have uh, uh, themselves been treated. Education is uh, neither here nor here. So, is that now questions the rationale behind the payment of trust in, in Nigeria? So, and that is why most often than not, people like us feel that the federal government definitely is not what it's supposed to do. Need to, they need to do the needful. But, uh, now, uh, as to the issue of uh, raising of taxes uh, for next year, and the question I want to ask myself is that what is the purchasing powers of Nigerians as it were now? Practically, <laughs> so many Nigerians, millions and millions of Nigerians are out of job. So, definitely, that is not your catchment. Uh, you are looking at those that are working, you are looking, uh, apart from the income tax, you are also looking at the ones from BAT and the rest of them. Uh, so, but, um, raising of taxes on a daily basis, Nigerians have already been overtaxed. Um, you, 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 if you see your bank account, they are charging you uh, a lot, um, then there, there is a stamp duty, then there is a bad, and there are so many other charges that you are, uh, you, you, that is imposed on you. Your, definitely your vehicles uh, are taxed because when you go to register your vehicle, you have that. Then you go to the supermarket. So Nigerians are overtaxed. In fact, they are this that they are they are double or triple tax for the same uh, product, and that is why the problem have always been. And you have also seen the problem that the issue uh, going on between the federal government and some states like Rivers, Lagos, on the issue of VAT. Who collect? Who will collect VAT? That issue is still pending in court and has not been decided. But that is not the way to go. That is not the way the New Year gift that Nigerians will need. Next year, so also expect that there's going to be an increase in petroleum products. The, as we've been told, uh, that it might even double. So Nigerians are totally overtaxed, and at the end of it, I continue to ask myself, what do they get in return for all these taxes? And um, I should think that uh, the government should be looking at other ways of 
raising revenue rather us on a daily basis raising tax as if uh, tax is the tax is not the only way to uh, to uh, to raise income in the country we, we talk about diversification of the economy the agriculture sector the mining sector instead of always over relying on um, oil, which it seems to be our own, only primary means of uh, foreign, uh, getting our foreigners and the rest of them. So, uh, but let's wait and see. Uh, but it's like it's going to be a very, very, very bleak new year for Nigeria has come to it. All right, uh, Chris, uh, let's uh, stay uh, with uh, the Daily Trust. Uh, uh, just below that particular headline, Nigeria, UAE lose uh, millions daily as diplomatic row deepens. Now, the last has not been heard concerning the COVID-19 red list. Uh, you know, we even discussed it yesterday on the show, uh, the economic impact. And now the Daily Trust also has, uh, you know, the economy uh, on mind. Uh, it says uh, millions uh, is uh, being lost daily following this particular row. What are your thoughts exactly, Chris? Yes, they are very the counter claims and uh, claims and counter claims from, from good countries, and definitely it is going to affect uh, the economy, uh, the business relationship between Nigeria and UAE. But let me also say this word that the trade imbalance is in favor. Uh, the, the trade imbalance is against Nigeria is in favor of UAE. Definitely, um, if you are going to put it, I will just say probably about seventy to thirty. Because what we export to the UAE, practically just exporting to the trader on a daily basis to see our people flying down to UAE. I'm going to buy there to purchase and also a route to other countries of people. So you see that UAE intend to gain more. We just uh, we are just talking about a minister that has just um, blown uh, his family or whatever to the UAE despite um, all the ban on Uber. But then let us look at it holistically from the economic angle, as we say, we are told that we have 25 flights coming from UAE on a weekly basis to Nigeria. And we just have one uh, from Nigeria flying um, to UAE. That is a complete <laughs> business imbalance, uh, in whichever you look at it. Not, not only that, not also, that's other point, there are also other airlines that fly Nigerians to UAE. You have Ethiopia airline, you have Qatar airline, or name all the uh, countries. So we just see that um, UAE tend to lose more, whether we like it or not. But to me, that is not the issue here. The issue is that our diplomat, uh, our, our ministry, especially the Minister of Foreign Affairs, uh, should be able to get its uh, arts right uh, when it comes to this. It's not just UAE now. We are talking of the United Kingdom. We are talking of Canada uh, and some other countries that are banned Nigeria. Because of Omicron, and because I've always asked myself is that how many people, how many Omicron variants um, have been discovered in Nigeria? I don't think it's up to 10 as of, as of last time I checked. And these are countries that on a daily basis you see that. Let, let's take for example United Kingdom. Most of the uh, football teams in United Kingdom are finding, uh, are finding it difficult to be able to raise a team for the, their matches because of the effect of money. Manchester United, Tottenham Hotspur, members of this uh, this team. Even recently, Leicester could even most of their uh, most of their players to come uh, and play um, abroad. Even our own Kelechi uh, Nacho was affected. He couldn't go and play in the last match. They played with Zenit, uh, I think Zenit uh, in, in Russia. So you can see the high increase in, uh, of this variance and Omicron in, in, in these countries. And I continue to wonder why they have to make Nigeria a scapegoat uh, when they, uh, as far as this issue is concerned. I hope there's no more. That there isn't much to this. But I believe that there's a diplomatic, a, a diplomatic um, solution to be found to this. And um, good enough, I was I, I just read in the, on the headline of the Daily Independent where it said that um, I think they are lifting some, going to lift or they lift some of the band and rest of it. But that is not just the way to go. I think that we can be able to handle this more diplomatically and much, much better than we have so, well, I'd like to take you back. L let's get back to the issue of the taxes. And uh, that's on the Daily Trust newspaper, like you have, uh, you know, put out rightly, there's nothing wrong in taxation and in collecting taxes and in citizens paying their tax, as a matter of fact, as part of the social contract. But let's also look at, you know, uh, other means, because according to the Minister of Finance, uh, it's a concern of saying the economy is recovering, 
We need to generate revenue, of course. Uh, looking at our budget, however, even the proposed, uh, you know, of course, the 2022 uh, budget has been put out, proposed. You find out that about 57% of uh, the proposed budget is meant for recurrent expenditure, and that is the cost of running governance. So wouldn't it be wise for us, you know, to uh, look inwards and try to reduce the cost of governance at all levels? Yes, we've always said that the cost of governance is very, very, very high. Uh, uh, our, if you look at our budget, the recurrent expenditure is always on the high, very, very, very high, as it were. And um, that you have less for capital projects, and that has always been the problem we've always had all, the, all this while. Um, uh, you see the number of aids that the ministers have, the number of aids that the members of the National Assembly have. Um, uh, then you also, uh, the, even the presidencies, the governors, and the rest of the When you put this together, you come to realize that the, the, our overhead is just too high. And these are also people that travel on all of them, particularly travel on the basis across the the world and the collector circles and the rest of them. So I, I think that's the need for us to um, put down uh, uh, on this. And um, the cost of governance is too high. So many people have advocated that we don't need to, uh, we don't need a bicameral uh, National Assembly that rather than Senate uh, 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 and have some electricity, we can do, we can just do away with one of them and just uh, have one. We have 360. Uh, members of the House of Representatives, and we have 109 uh, senators. And I was just reading one of the papers today where uh, the senior president was quoted to have said that uh, an average uh, member of National Assembly take, take every year is about 1.1 billion naira. That is huge. That is huge. So, uh, so that is why I said earlier, it's not just about task, task, task. You cannot continue. So, if tomorrow again there is need for you, are yeah, you going to raise the taxes again? Don't forget our battle was raised just to 5%, and they raised it to 7.5. And that has been ongoing. So if they are, if they are bringing more tax, are they are Nigerians, are you going to pass Nigerians to death? Are they going to die? When even the minimum uh, wage that they are, most of the states are supposed to pay, they are not paying. Most of the states have not been paid. The 30,000 uh, minimum wage, I'm sure you are aware of that. So many of them. And NLC, NLC have been crying about this for long. So we have serious uh, situation at hand that you can you realize that what we are facing presently is a very very difficult situation which i think that the government should be more creative more creative in their quest uh, to um, to raise income uh, or revenues rather than just as nigeria i've said it at that number that we have other ways of making money out of it, or this i've said it just a few minutes ago i talk about area in agriculture we can make we can get more from agriculture we can get more from mine and there are so many of that. Nigeria is rich with gold, with, uh, with diamond, with um, all sorts of business. There's no state in this country that practically doesn't have any, any mineral resource that, you can, uh, that can be exploited and be able to make less more be uh, beneficial uh, for Nigerians. But what are we doing about that? And also, we have also talked about the tinkering of the constitution, as it were. Presently, I was, I was at a um, few days ago, where was it? I think it was Saturday. Yes, Saturday. I was at the uh, sixth day convocation a ceremony of uh, Wafama Awolo University. And uh, I was invited, so I was at that system. And I listened to the speech of the governor of Ondo State. He spoke, he was the guest speaker at that. You need to see what he said. I, I think we should try to get that thing. If your viewers will like it. You need to see what he said about restructuring in Nigeria. Even at, after that, after him, the vice president, uh, you know, or Shibango, all true spoke on issues relating to that. You also need to listen to what he said. So everybody is on the same page on this. The way we Nigeria is in this structures is not working. And except to do something about it, then we are going to have issues. All right, uh, Chris, uh, let's uh, slide over to the day uh, leadership. Uh, let's talk about uh, Joe Banner headline for this morning. Controversy throws Akonde's account of Oshibajo's emergence as VP. Tinubu Aregbe Shola Amosu Cam the client's comment on power play and intrigues. Yes, there's been a lot of controversies uh, on that uh, uh, account, and that was based on the points raised by the 
the former uh, national chairman of APC and also former governor of the state, uh, uh, Akakondi, during his book, his book launch. And uh, he gave some kind of um, analysis on how um, Oshibaji became the vice president. And, but um, I read a piece, in, um, I, I read a write up by one of my friends, uh, Allah Ali. Um, he's a deputy editor with this day newspaper, and I, I, he, he is online. If you he, after this, can go to see where he gave a, a graphic uh, details of how Oshibaju actually became the vice president. And I, I want to also believe Wale's uh, account to a large extent because Wale used to be the political editor of this day newspaper before he now became a deputy, and he gave a vivid example. Um, Explanation on, on how Oshibajo talked about the Ubikula Mosu's angle, he talked about the Saraki angle, he talked about the uh, Rebusholas angle, and at the end of it, so he was able to keep it. But in that, it was even there that I realized that even uh, Oshibajo was, uh, 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 was against Oshibajo's name. We need to read that piece. It's the circulating on social media, on, on, on that includes all. Um, pre media uh, are able to. Uh, so, uh, most people believe that the account given by uh, uh, Chief Akonde was not too accurate because he seemed to uh, put so much uh, this thing on himself as if he was uh, one of those uh, behind it. But for me, <laughs> it's neither here nor there. The essence, what I know that is within the APC now, the fight is for the soul of who becomes the flag bearer of APC come 2023. And we know the graduators already. And Oshiba Joe is uh, already gearing up. The Kaban is also gearing up. So many other uh, uh, people. And, um, uh, but there, were, there is no perfect, as it were. Even the books we use in school, you see that. That is why you have on the periodical, you see, you see reviews. You'll be seeing that. Oh, first edition, second edition, third edition. You, you know what happens? That most often than not, more fat comes in, and those authors tend to upgrade those um, parts, as it were. But, um, I'm not a member of APC. I was in there when um, uh, Oshibajo was chosen. The nearest I, uh, I know of Oshibajo is the fact that he's a fellow uh, in Gobian like me and he attended the Gobi College uh, as an old boy. But I know that a lot of interest. But I can remember vividly, let me clip this. I know that during that period, that was a big stake. One, um, uh, uh, Bolatinopo wanted to be the vice president to um, uh, Buhari in 2015, and he insisted. But it, it was that, I know that there was a lot of intrigues, and, and the party, most of the members of the party, stopped actually lots of party that we cannot have a Muslim Muslim ticket. And that was why we couldn't get it. At the point that you, why you now say that, okay, present us with somebody that you know that you can you give us somebody. Don't forget that people like Amechi and the rest of them were come from us, become the vice president at that, at that point in time. But at the last moment, he decided to go for Oshibajo, who was a, a commissioner uh, in, in one of the, I think, during uh, what's his name, and from a fashionless um, government and the rest of them. But politics, <laughs> in politics, one minute could be one hour, one day, and one day could just turn to another one. But I know that what is happening is just them um, for 2020. Everybody is just trying to find themselves in a situation where they can stay and be able to become relevant. All right. Uh, let's also look at the fact that, uh, I mean, that's on the Daily Trust. Uh, Tamberwell is asking the president to declare a state of emergency on terrorists and enclaves. We'd like to share your thoughts on that. I mean, that's we'll talk about this. It's just like a broken record. We can talk about it. There is terrorists and there are terrorists. The fact is that these guys are terrorists. I've said to that number that the problem we have is that the body language of the president doesn't seem to be helping matters at all because where it is, most people believe that the president has not been doing enough and until we do make sure that most of those arrested and those perpetrating all these people are arrested and prosecuted, then um, we'll continue to have what we are. What we are doing present is uh, treating the issue of insecurity as well as, a, as a first, the terrorists and bandits, uh, which keep law. Kid gloves. Uh, the courts recently declared the uh, uh, terrorists. But come to think of it, and you ask yourself that how many of these people have been prosecuted? And just recently, uh, on a very, very sad note, 
about 25 passengers were bombed to death inside their vehicles uh, in Sokoto. And there have always been under attacks. And whenever this happens, what the president does is to put suspicious and give them marching order. Marching order to where? And I've never seen them march to anywhere. The situation is becoming so terrible that the now you can see the Secretary of State Governor is coming out to say just last week a commissioner, a serving commissioner in the uh, home state of uh, 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 of uh, this you know, president uh, was killed. Um, a commissioner was killed uh, recently. And that is just one out of many. So many Nigerians are in the bushes where they have been kidnapped and lots of being as well. So many of our students' children are in the hands of kidnappers. I will easily forgot you know that most of those children that were kidnapped that have not been, who practically gone to sleep with them. everybody has, is not behaving as if nothing happened. Some of those kids are still uh, with, the, with, the, uh, with the terrorists as it were. So uh, we cannot continue telling the president uh, just this month, if you get one of the newspapers. The Minister of Police Affairs was giving reason why President cannot put everywhere where he had those attacks and where people were killed and the rest of them. That is, to me, is, is absolute uh, rubbish. Uh, uh, sorry for the uh, choice of words. You cannot be saying that. That must be empathy. That must be empathy. These are Nigerians. These are people that you are supposed to. The primary responsibility of every government is to protect the life and properties of its citizens. And any government that cannot do that is seen as a failure. The way we are looking, the way things are going, this government has failed as far as the issue of its security is concerned. And that was one of the reasons why the president was elected in 2015, because most Nigerians believe that as a general, we'll be able to handle this effectively best. It's far, far worse than to have in 2015. Don't forget whatever anybody is saying. You know, they've been coming out to tell us that we are better, we are better than we are in 2015. That to me is not true. All right, uh, Chris, uh, let's uh, stay with the Daily Trust. Another interesting story there is uh, COVID-19 unvaccinated core members uh, barred from NYSC camps. How do you react? Well, COVID-19, um, this is not even a vaccination again. The, the, main, the main trust, the, the, the world has moved to the next level. is the boost that people are taking now. So taking the two jobs is no longer a good a, an issue with most countries. Here we are still dabbling with a uh, uh, common vaccination for uh, people in the advanced countries. We are going for boosters. I've taken my over, I took my two jars uh, close to a year now, and as if there is need for me to go and take my booster, I can't take my booster. So we shouldn't be uh, begging people now to uh, um, uh, take their uh, vaccination. For the youth corpus, yes, it's very key because. That is a congregation of so many people at the same time. And as a need that for most of these uh, children uh, who are now vulnerable to this uh, scourge to get themselves vaccinated, I totally agree with that. Anybody that is coming to the camp must have, uh, uh, must have been vaccinated and make sure that they are accurate. What they are bringing to the table is the they are real message. Uh, Messi, uh, and my brother, let me tell you, I've said it several times on the video. There are so many fake vaccination cards around. And you can just go and buy those cards and they will bring those traveling. That is why at times when you see most of these countries banning us and at times I don't tend to blame them because there's a lot of um, issues going around. It's where Nigerians will go and procure these um, vaccination cards for traveling purposes and for other uh, purposes. And they've not gotten vaccinated only for them to go to their the point of entry. And uh, by the time they try to check them, you see that they are having uh, 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 COVID-19. It does not necessarily mean that um, everybody uh, is not everybody that um, has the uh, has been vaccinated. That cannot have. Don't forget that there are instances where some people have also had those vaccinations, the two jabs, and they still die. Um, look at the uh, South African uh, president that just came recently to Nigeria to visit President. We just been told now that he he is having a coronavirus again. Uh, that, down with COVID-19. I can see Messi laughing. <laughs> but <laughs> but that, <laughs> that to me, we also be to question President. If he had a contact with the President, then I feel that our President should quarantine now too. So, that, <laughs> so but yeah, that is the way it is. It's not a, a laughing matter any longer because what it seems is now, the government has left everybody um, to themselves to be able to take care of themselves. Because they are not making so much noise. 
um, the various agencies of government are supposed to be in charge of. Everybody seems to have gone quiet and they're not making noise again. Is there. What I just say is that's like, like throwing us under the, under the bus. But every single person should try to make sure that he gets this vaccine and uh, so that uh, we don't go to hear the, you know, that's what they talk for local partners to read, to read and touches. But you also um, will want to agree because you we have um, health experts, you know, even government themselves saying we do not have these vaccines. The fact that our dependency on these countries for the vaccine and understanding the politics of the vaccine, we don't produce the vaccine, but we have to wait for these vaccines that have been produced. And of course, there will be a list of parity. So these countries will prioritize who gets first. And whatever is left has been pushed, you know, to the third world country. Uh, we're looking at Africa now as a continent and Nigeria as part of that. Now, uh, you know, you had some quarters saying, how many vaccines do we have available? The issue of expired vaccine, over a million doses of expired vaccine. Uh, so you, uh, as much as we're saying that people get vaccinated, do we have enough vaccines to vaccinate the people? That's also another one, uh, you know, another concern that we should be looking at. And then the vaccines that are available, have they expired? What would be the implication of administering expired vaccines to the people? So, um, you know, I, I feel like it's time that we, we, we move away from the dependency. If we say we need to get people vaccine, we need to find a way of also producing our vaccine. So we don't have to, uh, you know, be dependent on them. That, that, that's also. So let's imagine, that, I'm putting this out now. Let's imagine that everyone, uh, you know, the entire population has not been vaccinated, say they want to come out. Do we have enough vaccine to vaccinate the people? I, I agree with you totally. Um, I have always said that uh, we need a homegrown solution to most of these problems, especially when it comes to the issue of the vaccine. Uh, Africa has not been doing enough. We have been just as we've always done, and depending on Western world for handouts, we do that with the uh, funds. We go to IMF, we go to World Bank to beg for money. We need to get money for infrastructure. Nigeria goes on a daily basis, borrowing from China and the rest of the world on a daily basis. Who, who, he who goes borrowing goes uh, soloing. Um, and until we'll be able to find solutions to this problem and localize it and make sure that we get to handle issues of this vaccine on our own, we always continue to find ourselves where we are. And at any given situation, I did say in my language that uh, if a fire um, uh, drops on your laps and drops on that of your, the child you are carrying, which will you remove first? Definitely, definitely you remove that of the one on you. The thought of that of your child, as much as you love that child. So nobody will love you more than yourself. The countries of the world, they also have their own challenges when it comes to the COVID-19. And they must make sure that their own people are well taken care of uh, before they start giving out to it. Whatever you're going to get at the end of the handout. And... At times, that, 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 okay, that's even what is called the politics of COVID. You can never have the money and you want to get this vaccine. And those countries will not say to you, yeah, I'm sure you are aware of that, that you can have. There was a time that Africa said, okay, we even want by through the African Development Bank, uh, uh, African Development Bank. And they said that we want to buy, we want to purchase for this, purchase this for Africa. And <laughs> nobody was ready to be uh, to sell to them. Um, also, in that period, our own. Uh, um, uh, Dr. Ngozi Okonjo Iwala also spoke permanently on how Africa is being neglected when it comes to the issue of vaccine. The uh, DG of the uh, World Health Organization also spoke on the uh, disparity between the Western world and what is coming to Africa. It's, you also ask yourself, even the issue that we have got, what do we do with it? We just spoke now that we have a million doses that uh, expired. Let me even assume that that those uh, uh, vaccine came in just one week before they expire. If we have put all the necessary things in place, as that vaccine is landing in Nigeria, one million people, or it's not even going to be one million because it, it, you know it's, it's, it's double. Right. Uh, double jab. So they're looking at about five hundred thousand people. Five hundred thousand people would have gotten that job before it expired. But what's going to happen at the end of the day? So what I still believe and with that we should still do is that we should have a homegrown solution to some of these problems. COVID-19 is going to be, it's not going to be the last. Mercy, so many pandemics will also come. And it is only how, when we show the capacity that we are ready to be able to do this. That you, you remember what happened with the Ebola in the past. And where Africa was, uh, was like uh, at the receiving end, that it took so many 
uh, months before we complete the helicopter. And we cannot continue to wait on the Western world to give us solutions on the we have scientists, we have Nigerians. One of those that developed the vaccine in that video uh, that is a Nigerian. I'm sure you remember that guy I can't remember his name now. I think one of the top hospitals in the US of there. He was part of the team. So there are so many Nigerians who are doing wonderfully across the globe. But in Africa, are we giving them the opportunity to, be, to develop themselves? Are All we right. giving them business? Uh, Chris, we have to let you go now. Thank you so well, much. You. We appreciate your time, Chris Owandu. Thank you so much for being part of the conversation. Uh, we appreciate your thoughts and we look forward to sharing more of your thoughts on uh, some national and global issue. Uh, once again, thank you for joining us. Thank you very much for having. Do have a nice day. All right, then. We will take a short break. When we return, we'll head straight to our second conversation. And of course, we'll be looking at the issue of, uh, yes, uh, the additional tax for Nigerians come 2022, according to the Minister of Finance. Please stick around. And just before that, uh, we'll be taking today in history and uh, Sandy Hook Elementary shooting is uh, what we'll be looking at uh, 2012. Uh, stay with us.